Well, good morning and welcome to another of our online acts of worship coming to you here from the manse this morning. So from our home, our household, from Emma, me and the kids, grace and peace to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope and pray that this video finds you safe and well this morning. And we're going to be doing things slightly differently this morning compared to recent weeks. We're going to be taking a break from our series in Philippians, which we'll resume again next Sunday morning. And instead, we'll be hearing from Joth Hunt. Joth is one of the Southern Counties regional ministers. And we're going to use his recent reflection on the words of Hebrews 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we're going to use this to help to focus our thoughts and our prayers this morning on what the Lord might be saying to each one of us. So with Sandy's help, thank you, brother. We're going to pause to pray and sing at certain points through our time uh, as prompted. And let me encourage you to do that, to engage prayerfully with one another in your homes at various points. Uh, at such a time as this, it's so important that we seek God's face together in prayer. So do do that this morning and until such a time as we're able to meet together again at the church. More details of which uh, will be coming to you very soon. Until we're able to do that, we'll continue to hold a fortnightly virtual prayer meeting, the next of which will be on the 16th of July. Uh, do join us for that if you're able to do so. Well, we're going to start our act of worship this morning by singing uh, this song, a song to help us focus on those words from Hebrews, reminding us that the God we worship is the everlasting God, the uncreated God, the never changing God. The God who is always loving, always true, always merciful, always good. The God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let's sing everlasting God. The years go by, but you're unchanging. Let's sing together. Yesterday, today, and 
forever You are the same You never change Yesterday, today and forever You are faithful We will trust in You are faithful We will trust in You are faithful We will trust in You Almighty God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your salvation. Help us to care for the things you are passionate about. Help us to reach the most vulnerable in our society. Help us to demonstrate our faith with acts of kindness. Grant us a safe heart, an open hand and a positive word. Save us from a life of seeking you with all the wrong motives. Teach us your ways, O oh God, that I that we may live in your promise. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to pray for the persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. What comes to mind when you think of persecution? Hardship, pain, torture, oppression? Certainly all these things are true. But did you know that persecution could be counted as a privilege. Though troubles surround them, peace is deep within their hearts. This morning we're going to be praying for three countries, for Colombia, for India and for Bangladesh, where many of our brothers and sisters suffer because of their faith. Colombian Christians expelled during COVID-19. During the coronavirus pandemic, the persecution of Christians in Colombia has increased as believers are being blamed for the virus. In the last few weeks, incidents of persecutions against Christians in rural parts of the country have increased. In some rural areas of Colombia, which is number 41 on the Open Doors World Watch List, local evangelical Christians are being sent to prison by indigenous ethnic leaders who deem them responsible for COVID-19. Christians in India are often the last line for essential COVID-19 food and aid because of their faith. And this is on top of the persecution they already face for following Jesus. Akesh, an Open Doors partner in India, explains how the team are helping those in crisis. And lastly, official aid is not, being, is not reaching vulnerable Christians in Bangladesh. Thanks to the prayers and gifts of Open Door supporters, our partners have been able to deliver vital food and believers in Bangladesh share their heartfelt thanks. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Father, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in Colombia, India and Bangladesh who are suffering injustice because of COVID-19. We know that many Christians are blamed for problems in their countries and now, as in Colombia, being blamed for COVID-19. As we are seeing that across the world so many have been infected with COVID-19 and many have died. At a time when we hear that the world is in crisis and we need to work together, Christians, in not only these countries, but many others, are being treated as outcasts. Thank you, Father, that we can pray for our brothers and sisters at this time. We pray that God will sustain their faith of persecuted believers, so they, so they might faithfully endure trials and sufferings for Christ's sake. Amen. Let's finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand you over shortly to Joth, to Joth Hunt from SCBA. And when prompted to do so at various points, do hit the pause button on your screens and pray as prompted and led by the Spirit. And then we'll sing before we rejoin Joth at various stages of his journey. But before I hand you over to Joth, let me just pray that God would speak to us this morning. Let me pray. So, Father, we thank you for this time that we have ahead of us now. And as we consider those words of Hebrews 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And as we pause to pray and exalt the Lord Jesus in worship, Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and that the time ahead would be used uh, for our good and for the glory of your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, over to Joth now. Hi, welcome to the 14th SCBA video that we have done during this Corona lockdown. I'm Joth Hunt and it's my privilege again to bring the greetings of the team to you. Uh, we hope that uh, these videos have been really helpful to you and that you've been encouraged uh, by watching them. Uh, due to the easing of lockdown, I thought I might bring you out and bring you to a place that's become quite important to me. In fact, to introduce you to a good friend of mine, which is the Itchin River. I've been coming down here during the last few months and weeks, doing a bit of running and walking along the river and it's a beautiful place to be. In fact actually on Saturday the 30th of May a friend of mine Declan and I decided we'd walk the whole of the what's called the Itchin Navigation or the Itchin Way and we started down about five miles down that way at a place called the Itchin Bridge in Southampton and we made our way through what this is called Riverside through Riverside up to Eastleigh and then on to Winchester in the north and then we bared over to the east uh, and eventually arrived at the source of the river which is in a place called New Cheriton. It was a long walk, uh, it took us 12 hours and it was about 30 miles in total. If you're going to complete a walk you have to keep moving from the past into the present and then stepping out into the future. And I've been considering and I'm, I guess many of us have because we probably feel that we're very much at a crossway or cross point in our lives at this point in time or particularly in the life of the church and the words that often come back to me when I think about a cross, crossroads or a, a crossway is when the writer of Hebrews in, thir in chapter 13 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever and that sense that Jesus is in history is in the present but he will also be with us into tomorrow so I wanted to just bring this reflection around those thoughts, but also to introduce you to some of my favourite spots along this Itchin River. So let's take a walk, shall we? Well, welcome to this lovely part of the river. We're just north of Banbridge, just south of Shawford. To get to the present, you always need to walk through the past. I found that there are two misguided views about the past. Often the glorified past or the over-romanticised past. And then you get the other people that reject the past or want to ignore the past or forget the past. I think both of those are dangerous views. There's something precious and special about the past. It's good to reflect back. When I go, to, go on a walk, I often take photos so that later I can look back and, and see what the past looked like and remind myself of the journey that I've been on. When you're walking along a river, of course, the river remains the same, but the view changes as you move further along the river. Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same, and yet the journey of the church will be different. It will always look different. We need to remember the past and celebrate the past and actually pick up some precious gifts from the past but we have to move forward, stepping out of that place and into whatever the next scene, the next mile might look like. Oh, yeah. 
Welcome to Compton Lock. This is one of my favourite spots, but it's also a favourite spot of many others. In fact, at a, at a weekend, a hot weekend, this place will be heaving. Uh, kids will be in the water, people will be having picnics. It's a, it's a busy place. In Hebrews 1, sorry, Hebrews 13, verse 8, the writer says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. I quite often wonder whether we as Christians uh, emphasize the yesterday and the forever and often forget the moment of today. We're interested in what God has done, of course we are, and that's really, really important. And we're absolutely fascinated with what God is going to do. But what is God doing now? Jesus Christ is in the present, in the moment. We, we mustn't miss the moment. However much we might want to reminisce about the past and however much we're keen to know what the future has before us, it is today that we find ourselves in the present. Stop for a moment. What moment are you in at this point in time and how, and how are you recognising and noticing what God is doing in your life? And whether it be a moment of difficulty, a moment of suffering, a moment of hardship, or maybe it's a moment of celebration and rejoicing and joy, whatever it is, recognise the moment and remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Yes. Great is your faith. 
Let's move further on and make our way up towards Winchester. This is Hockley Viaduct. It's just south of Winchester and it's one of the moments where you can get above the Itchen River and begin to look ahead and get some glimpses of the journey that is ahead of us. We live in strange times with words like zoom and furlough and phrases like I cannot hear you or what is going to be the new normal. Sue and I uh, recently, yesterday actually, last night, were watching the film Peter Rabbit. And uh, in Peter Rabbit there's this wonderful character, the cockerel. And the cockerel wakes each morning with great surprise that there is a morning. I know, and no one told me that this was going to happen, that the sun was going to rise again. And he's so excited about the new day. We can take two extremes, I think, when we think about the future. We can take the extreme where we spend all our time and all our energy and all our efforts and all our planning in thinking about the future. Or we can take the position of being over fearful of the future, being uncertain and insecure and fearful and afraid of what might be ahead of us. Do you know, the, uh, the film Back to the Future was just a fictitious story. No one has been to the future, no one can come and tell us what is ahead of us. But what we can be certain of is that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And our confidence is not so much in what will happen, but in who we travel with. So let's get going and see if we can get slightly further up the river. So 
I brought you to this last little favourite spot of mine. We're just east of Winchester in a little place called Overton Village and just across this bridge is a lovely little pub called The Bush Inn. Uh, we arrived at this place and rested on, on our walk but by the time we got here, in fact actually there's another five miles to go before you get to the source of the river in Cheriton. And uh, when we arrived here I was beginning to feel quite exhausted. I had blisters on my feet, uh, my legs were beginning to seize up, I was beginning to struggle. In fact actually the last five miles were really the toughest. When the writer of the Hebrews wrote that book he wanted to encourage them that Jesus remains to be Lord all the way through it. Through the good and through the bad, through the difficult, through the tough times, he remains to be the Lord. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. When I arrived at the end of my walk, I was absolutely delighted to see my wife. In fact, I'm always delighted to see my wife, but on this occasion I was particularly delighted to see her. She had arrived with the car. She said I looked like an old man walking up the street and I was really hobbling by that point. But to see her face to face was such a joy. And that's the promise that we have. That's the promise of the writer of the Hebrews. That's the promise of the Bible. Is that as we walk into the future, as we move with Jesus, as we are reminded that he is the Lord of the past, the present and the future and that he will always be with us, that one day we will be filled with joy as we see him face to face. Well, I hope and pray that you've found our slightly different act of worship a, a blessing and a benefit this morning. Uh, let me encourage you, if you've heard God speaking to you about something this morning that you think might be helpful to share, then do do that. Do get in touch with me or with Helen at the office so that we can share how God is speaking to us at this time. In fact, before we sing one last time this morning, Helen is going to share with us how God has been prompting her in recent weeks. So let me pass you over to Helen before we sing again, and then Joth will conclude our time with a final blessing. God bless you this day and this week. Helen, over to you. Everyone, I just wanted to spend a few minutes giving uh, a testimony over something that's happened this week that I thought might encourage you and interest you, uh, hopefully both. Um, some of you may know from time to time I, I write poetry and it's always um, a poem that God gives me in the middle of a, uh, a situation or as a response to something. And um, this week I, I was given a poem for my neighbour um, just to give you a bit of background to that, I texted her on Monday because I hadn't seen them since we stopped having the NHS clap together. So I took the opportunity just to text and ask how they were. It's a Bangladeshi family with two young children and a really lovely family. He's a lecturer at university and she is doing research work. So very uh, lovely couple from Bangladesh. Anyway, she texted back and said thank you, but that she had very sad news in that her brother-in-law had that day passed away from COVID-19 out in Bangladesh. And on top of all that, he is actually, or was, the Minister for Defence out there in Bangladesh. So a very um, educated and responsible man with a position uh, highly regarded and obviously uh, hugely um, missed a huge shock to our neighbours and obviously um, they're feeling that loss acutely. Anyway, uh, I gave, uh, I asked God for um, a poem, should he want to give me one or something to encourage them. Uh, obviously we were able to buy the normal sympathy card and some flowers but it just didn't seem enough. Anyway, uh, on Monday night, God did give me a, um, a poem and it was called Unanswered Questions. And within a few moments, really, I'd written the poem or God had given me the words for the poem. And um, I slept on it, not wanting to offend in any way. But obviously, uh, I showed it to John and in the end, I did send it on Tuesday morning to them. And uh, it was received with such humility and grace. They are a Muslim family. They are a family 
that are uh, non-practicing Muslims and the poem itself didn't mention faith, it mentioned God and uh, they received it with such grace and then later on she asked me if she could uh, send it on to the family in Bangladesh as a, a tribute to the brother-in-law. Uh, I was deeply humbled by this and deeply moved that they should take something that a Christian has written and send it to their family out there. And John and I are now praying for more opportunities to share Jesus with this lovely family, a family that really do uh, need to know the love of Jesus at this time in their lives. I hope that encourages you to just follow God's heart, whatever he's calling you to do, whether it's a text, a card or a letter or sometimes something different, but to just be encouraged that God is at work in this difficult time. Thanks then. God bless you. Bye.
to close by just using the words of the Hebrew writer uh, in chapter 13 as a little blessing and prayer for us. Now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep equip you for everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.